part about Wix is that you can transform yourself into someone entirely new with just one thing to put on, right? So instead of spending a lot of money or maybe damaging your hair in a salon to get a crazy look, you can get wig. Uh, so why wigs in Lolita fashion? Uh, there is it's a way of transforming yourselves and putting more like an over-the-top look to your Lolita fashion, especially with uh, Sweet Lolita. So if you grab a magazine, you start looking at the pictures, you will see these big, huge ponytails, um, intense like curls and and like very glamorous uh, hair looks, right? And the thing is that you usually can't do that with hair because sometimes hair is is maybe too too thin, too short, too something. So <laughs> instead of waiting maybe five years to your hair to grow, uh, all you need to do is get yourself an awesome wig. Okay, so I guess the question number one. Oh, another thing is. Uh, wigs give a different look to, to your entire outfit. I don't know, it makes it more polish. So, first thing that... There's some... Uh, today's today's uh, live show is more about me talking and showing you cool pictures about Denise, the wig queen. The wig queen. Um, so, how do you choose a wig, right? That's very important. Uh, wigs come in natural hair and also in synthetic, synthetic hair. Natural, they're very expensive and they are made out of real hair from someone. <laughs> so, and, and it requires more care. Uh, in Lolita fashion, it's very rare to see any type of natural hair. It's more synthetic. But among the synthetic uh, variety of wigs, there is one that look better than the others. And I'm gonna show you guys um, the things that you need to look uh, for a wig to know that it's quality is one, um, that it doesn't shine. It doesn't have like a, a, a very plastic glow. That's very important. Uh, two, I know the worry about wigs also and I was like, this is awesome! And then some friends said, no, it looks horrible. Uh, so we're all learning, don't worry about it, no judgments here. Um, and then another thing is when you brush it, it shouldn't be uh, difficult to brush, right? Um, another thing is, and I'm talking this, imagining that you can actually touch it and try it on, then if you try it on, it shouldn't be itchy on your skin, right? Um, now, most of us, we buy them online. <laughs> Honestly, what I do is look at real pictures of people who already have them. Um, so nowadays, eBay, Amazon, um, they have a review box and people can put pictures. So that's what I do. Um, I can recommend you brands. Uh, uh, I can recommend you uh, Airy is a Japanese brand. Sweet Star is also Japanese. Uh, and there's also Dreamholic, which is great. And the price point is between $25 to $50 plus shipping, right? But sometimes on eBay, you can find like wigs for $5 or $10 or $15, and they're actually really good. So, uh, it's tricky, especially online. I'm not gonna lie, it's more like a hit and miss. Um, but if you have the chance to go to a wig store and you are like, hmm, 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 uh, you want it to, even if it's um, uh, like a fan fantasy color, like a high pink, hot pink, blues, you still want it to look um, like this wig over here of the lovely Amy. Emily. Emily? Oh, Lee. <laughs> oh, Lee. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so see the shine, see how it falls. Um, that's a good quality way. Also, in, in this role, we have uh, very good weights. Mm. Now, if it feels plasticky, then you might want to just avoid it. Uh, because later, 
the more you use it, uh, the messier it will look. It's, it's gonna the the fabric. Sorry, the fiber. Mm. no 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 fiber. Sorry, the fiber is going to uh, break easily. So that's how you can know uh, what's the quality. Uh, also, there is. Uh, a type of mm, denomination for each uh, material, which I'm going to email to you, uh, and I'll put it in from the lower quality to the highest. So most of the stores will tell you, oh, this is nylon, or this is polyester, or this is uh, natural hair, or this is blah, blah, blah. And most of the time, these wigs are uh, non-heat resistant, so do not put heat, they're gonna melt, <laughs> um, especially not not ironing. It's, some of them said yes, it's heat resistant, but uh, you need to be super careful. Okay. So next is how to put it on. And I got this question from a lot of people, especially if because I don't have my sleep on. Um, uh, it's very simple. And you can do it in a lot of different ways. It's up to you, your skills. Some people, well, first you need to have your hair dry because you don't want it to be like be wet yeah. and be sitting there. <laughs> it gets it, it, it damages your hair also. Uh, and sometimes it smells like wet clothes. <laughs> um, yeah, so dry, dry. And some people are very very good to do like. Um, Braids, but the ones that, that I think it's called French braids, the ones that are mm -hmm. very tight to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I do when I have, I used to have the hair longer, so what I do is mm, half of my hair, this, and then up, and then I will have one, one right here, one right here, and then to one side. But because right now um, my hair is short. And it doesn't need to be like super perfect because on top of this, we're gonna put a wig cap. Who has used a wig cap before? Yes, very good. And what type of wig cap do you have? Is the one that goes all the way through your head and then up, or the one that's just it's a cap like a... It's like the black net. Black net? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have the one like, you have to put your hair open it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the one I'm wearing now, it's like a beige, and you just kind of mm -hmm. put it on, and it mm -hmm. all stays together. Yeah, yep. Oh, yeah, I use that one. Oh, okay, perfect, yeah. So, the first type of nets that I started using was one that it didn't have the open end, so it was very difficult to put on. Uh, another thing, use rubber bands that are small. So it doesn't add to your wookie hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, like this. So tell me girls, what, what's, have you ever tried a weave? What's your main issue when you are trying to hide your hair under? Do you have any issues? Yes. <laughs> Because this is my hair is flat ironed right now, mm -hmm. but if I don't flat iron, my hair is like huge. Mm -hmm. And so if I try and I would have to flat iron my hair to put on a wig, mm -hmm. and it irritates me because I have to spend an hour to flat iron my hair yeah. and then like covering yeah, it up. Really yeah. Yes. So most of the, what I tried this past summer, mm -hmm. from the beginning of July to the beginning of August, I had my hair braided back, and it made it a lot easier. <laughs> Ooh, yes. So I didn't have to worry about flat ironing my mm -hmm. hair and giving it heat damage. I could just like slap it away from it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a good one too. Especially, I mean, you're gonna find ways of figuring out your own hair. Like a bit, if you you you're not gonna have any trouble. I'm not gonna like, have much trouble. <laughs> Put it up and there we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same. So I will pin my braid like this. And we want to distribute the hair so there is no weird bumps because sometimes I see the wig and then it's like there's a bump here, <laughs> yeah. up or down. And you, if there is 
a place that you need to hide your hair because you have too, too much or too long, do it like here. Don't do it here mm -hmm. because then it will create a weird bump. That's I think. Um, all right, so this is my wig cap. And it's like, it has a hole. And um, my head is very sensitive, so I like to strip strip before using it because mm -hmm. then it, it will give me a headache. That's another thing, when you have a wig, you want to try it on and see if the wig cap, or, or more like the cap of the wig, is not causing you a headache. Okay, so you will you'll pass it all the way to your, to your um, neck. And then what I like to do, just to cover all the, the loose hairs, is I will let the rubber band uh, in the middle of my forehead and then just to slide it and we, you don't want hairs so be careful here let's look good looks good here like this and then uh, you can pull it a little bit up and hide over here um, hello do you know what is a front lace? Yeah. Okay, front lace wig. Uh, the front lace wig is the ones that don't have back. Yeah. So that's like pro level thickness, right? So here you go. Everything is very flat. No problem. I don't put clips uh, under. One, because I don't need it. It does, usually doesn't slide for me. Uh, Back then, when I had the wig cap without this this open, yes, I need to have this. It start like sliding up, mine sliding slides. up. Yeah, mine uh -huh. slides. Yeah. yeah, but if if it's I don't know the wig cap, the shape of your head that makes it slide back, right. you can always pin it. One here. Some cosplayers, when they uh, need to do performance, they are very uh, dramatic, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they use and this is because I've seen it. They use duct tape. They put really? duct tape here oh because God. that way that hurts. Extreme. <laughs> That's extreme. Um, some other people use like eyelash glue. Blue. Yeah, yes. eyelash glue. So that's up to you guys. Okay, right. So I'm ready for my wig. Uh, another thing that I do before putting the wig is I take my lashes. I fix my eyebrows. Oh, so it's uh, okay. Wig, wig cap first before you do your makeup. Yeah, I usually yeah. do my wig cap first, and that helps me to do my makeup. Cause hair is not hitting my face. And here is the wig. And before I put it on, I want to tell you guys how to store your wigs. Cause that's very important. At some point, I bought a lot of them, and I didn't store them properly. So. <laughs> They, they look terrible now, right? Yeah. So, uh, you have two ways of storing them, but let's imagine that I just finished wearing my wig and I have it ready. Well, first, I wanna know if I use any type of product, like spray or something, or maybe it's the fourth time that I've been using this wig. I would like to clean it. And the way that you wash a wig is very simple. You will grab, um, a bowl that is enough for, for the wig that you have. Uh, fill it with water. Water is room temperature. Don't use um, hot water, please. Don't. You're gonna burn your hands and, and the wig burns. Um, so temp room temperature water, and you can use a lot of different products from hand soap to uh, a little bit of your detergent, or you can actually go in and buy special wig shampoo, right? And they sell it in Sally Supplies and Sephora and everywhere. And it doesn't need to be expensive at all because uh, to be honest, um, the fiber doesn't absorb like a human hair and it doesn't grow. So even if they sell you this idea of, oh my God, the amazing shampoo of the gods, don't, you don't need to do that. What I do is my, my um, a hand soap that doesn't have any type of 
like perfume or extra stuff, I will dilute that um, one tablespoon, big spoon. I dilute it, I move it, make it make it bubbly, and then I will grab the wig and I will lay it inside the bowl, and it's just like a little massage. Don't not, nothing like this, nothing like this. Don't don't squish it. Don't nothing. It's just lay there and then just caress it, caress it. Uh, and you, if it's too dirty, if maybe you use a heavy product like a spray, uh, you want to leave, leave it there maybe 10 minutes just to soak to remove all, all the uh, dirty, dirtiness. Uh, and then when you uh, take it out, just grab it and just let, let gravity to um, bring the, damp, the water down. And you just gently squeeze it, but very gently, don't don't do the, the thing that we do with your hair, like don't do it, just gently. And just like that, you can put it on your head um, and your head form, or you can hang it. Like hang it, just, you want it to keep the, the shape. Um, you can also lay it flat uh, on a, on a uh, towel and pat, pat it down. But it's better if you just hang it and you can pat it down with, with a towel. And if your wig has any type of ringlets, what you do is you're gonna wait. Um, it shouldn't be wet, but it shouldn't be dry, something in between. And you're going to, depending on the type of curl, you're gonna grab the curl, make it back like this. Can you help me holding this? This is not curly, but imagine that your wig is curly and the wigs go this way, right? So you will do a ring like this, a curly, and pin it. And it's better if you pin it with something like, where am I? Are you okay? It's here. Okay, this one. Um, if you don't want to have a mark, what you can do is with a little piece of paper, put it in between, and that will uh, prevent uh, for to the pin to mark the fiber. Um, there are some pins that come with a rubber already, but those are more expensive. So, yes. And you're gonna let it dry for one entire day. One entire day. If your wig is like, like this one, and it's very straight. Uh, you want to brush it before letting it uh, dry completely. And talking about brushes, it's very important that you don't mix your hairbrush with your wig brush because we have um, natural oil. But sometimes, and, and the oil is not the problem. Um, actually, the oil will help the wig. But if for natural. Um, Hair oil is mixed already with spray, with another product, with just dirt of the atmosphere because honestly gases and, and uh, dust sticks to our hair. That will transfer to the wig, right? So it's better to keep it separate. And whenever you purchase a wig online, it's gonna come with a brush like this one, which it doesn't work for anything, <laughs> honestly. Uh, uh, this is something that I got online. Um, it was it was better than this, but my friend Rosie, that you're gonna meet her in a few minutes, uh, she showed me this one, which is like oh, so perfect. Um, it's super soft. The bristles are soft. It's synthetic, um, and the tip um, there is a protection, so it doesn't break the fiber, and it's very light. You actually can use it in your hair because uh, it doesn't. This type of material doesn't keep uh, growing any type of bacteria or any type of um, dirtiness. So you can just wash it. So when you use it, exactly. And, brush. and you brush your wig. And obviously you want to brush your wig before you put it on. And let's put it on. And there is many ways of putting a wig. Uh, this is how I do it because I feel more comfortable. Some people like turn it like this, and 
turn it like this, and then they put it on. But what I do is very simple. I put it like this. And what I want to do is first know where the middle is. Sometimes this part is on the side, depending on the style of the wig. Just make sure that this part goes where it needs to be. That's the first thing. So right there. And my wig has a comb. Some don't, some have, but um, I'll stick the comb here. And then what I do is I pull the wig all the way down. So it's covering my hair. And then I start adjusting it. I, I like to put the wigs very, very low, very far. So then I can pull back according to my, my desire. I like my bands to be covering my eyebrows. Uh, that's another thing. Um, Denise is going to explain her, her take on when you wait, doesn't match your eyebrows. <laughs> so I'm just gonna explain that for you guys. Um, and then you brush it, make it look good. See how it's very flat to my to my scalp, and it doesn't. You can't see where I put my braids. Uh, one thing that I really, really like to do to make it more natural is, especially in Lilia fashion, is to show. Your, your, um, your, your ears, mm -hmm. like that. Like that. And it's, it also helps if your headpiece is a bat, like mine.